And now I'll start with attire of Visaya. The most notable difference among the various antique groups are their dialects, religion, costumes, and way of life, which includes their traditional costumes. The use of traditional costumes can be seen from two periods of time, that is the classical and modern period. The classical period, traditional costumes were worn during ritual, weddings, as well as their daily wear. In modern times, traditional costumes are only worn as special special occasions like weddings and traditional functions. Most antique groups in Sabah use black as their domain color of their traditional costumes. The use of black stems from the, the belief that black is gaudy color and represents power that will protect the user from the bad spirits. Other beliefs state that the use of black is synonymous with the way of life and natural conditions at the particular time. In terms of dress, the Bisaya people have their own traditional clothes and are purposely used in cultural performance. The process is simple and reflects the image of the pleasant community. Unlike other ethnic traditions, clothing is locked with accessories. Next, the traditional clothing is worn on a regular day by adolescents and adults of Bisaya. It's very long pants that cover the face. As the partner worn a long sleeve shirt, we have round shirt neck. The shirt is split into three with no pockets. At certain times, this outfit is supplemented with a show cloak placed on the shoulder. While at official events, such as attending a certain ceremony, pants are replaced with sarong clothes. The colors used by teenagers are brighter as dominant as black. To go more deep on the attire, their clothes are highlighted with strong stitch work that strengthens the attire and decorates as well. Visaya attire is similar to the traditional costumes of the Dusun, Kadayan, and Puak Balait of Brunei. In the past, the attire of the Visaya was long-sleeved and fastened with silver buttons, but as time passed, it was made shorter. A full gold-threaded sarong completes each outfit. Silver and gold jewelry was worn with the dress, and the hair is tied into a low knot with hairnet made of sparkling glass beads and hairpins, which complete the attire. Now we're going to talk about taboo. Bisaya men and women do not have tattoos, men do not pierce their ears, and young men sometimes burn scars on their forearms. One of the reasons why they do not have tattoos is because they are Muslim, and Muslims are forbidden to ink themselves. The young people of early Bisaya, like the Iban, sharpen or inlay their incisors. Bisaya gender equality have reasonable distribution of work. Women cook at home, wash clothes, and carry water, while the men went hunting, chopping wood, and building a house. Both men and women go to the fields to cultivate. Most Bisaya people believe in Muslim, but they also believe that all things have soul and also the earth has is inhabited by many good elves and ghosts, so they have great respect for ghosts and gods. The second taboo is construction, where uh, the Bisaya community abide by when the when building home, which includes a restrict a strict deterrence against uttering any bad words or insults, and a restriction against menstruating women to enter the unfinished house. Although the traditional houses built within the KDCA grounds differ slightly in terms of building materials, the overall architecture is preserved as important monuments for future generation. The traditional house hold much sentimental value to the KDM community as a whole, and the houses are evidence of people's ability, willingness, and sincerity to unite in diversity for the sake of dignity of their culture which bears the identity of the collective KDM group. Third taboo is Baba Bala, as known as the witch doctor who collect bees, especially beetles and sensitive teeth, which are called Bala. These are specifically choose because they all have extra legs. They all moved into bamboo shoes on a Friday when the Malaba Bala performs the lectures. He takes the name of long doors, write them on a piece of paper and put it in the bamboo shoes. If the paper are torn in the shoes, it means the insects are willing to accept the owner of the name. The 
which doctor then proceeds to tie a white string on each leg of his assistant as well as the insect. He then sets them with instructions to lodge themselves inside the victim's body and bite his internal organs. The insect then goes back to their master if the string that were tied to the insect are led with blood, then the hex was successful. If the string are tied, the person was innocent and able to resist the magic. Pregnant women should avoid from soft drinks as it might over increase the size of the fetus. They should not they shouldn't stay by doors as it might cause difficult during labor. When a baby is due, a spiritual doctor may recite prayers to keep spit away during labor as sexual during child obesities. After birth, the expelled placenta may be buried along with pen and paper to make the baby smart. The baby first faces should be massaged into the infant skulls like toothpaste because supposedly it ensures strong teeth. The next one, Visaya strongly believes there is a spirit in living and non-living things. They are trying to request and the minimums to often the spirit. For example, river springs, sky springs. If a person has fall sick or catch with a disease, it is believed by the desire to be solace. Therefore, it's a job for the spring medium to retrieve their soul back. And the next one, cutting change in the evening. The belief replacing cutting in the evening will put your family in harm's way. Much like replacing cutting for the week of the loved one, replacing cuttings in the evening may attract the death and the bad luck. Also, why would you replace cutting in the evening? You make to God the shake of your life when your first things that grace you. When you wake up the following morning, uh, your mis miscatched cuttings, then you will spend the rest of the day carrying over your color trees. Not good.